Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli back out here in the shop and we're continuing the ultimate spinnerbait series, giving you all the ins and outs, talking everything about one of the best bass baits ever created, right? We mentioned in the first one, if you remember, why that spinnerbait is so good, it appeals to multiple senses to a fish, right? It appeals to a sight, sound, vibration, flash, all those elements, right? Uh, the other thing, that spinnerbait is pretty snagless. You could throw it in a lot of conditions, a uh, heavy cover, sparse cover, open water. Um, it's a great all around lure to fish in different places. Clean water, muddy water, stained water, all that. The other thing, in that first video, we talked about the blades. The blades are really important. We went over the three styles, the round blade, the Colorado maximum vibration, the elongated blade, the willow maximum flash, and then of course those Indianas, which are a little in between, right? Um, now in this segment of the Ultimate Spinnerbait series, we're gonna dive into some other really important aspects of this lure. We're gonna talk about picking size, of the spinnerbait. We're gonna talk a little bit about picking color. How do you select the right color of spinnerbait? And last but not least, we're gonna get into add-ons. And there's a few little add-ons you could put on this spinnerbait to make it a better lure. Okay, let's start with size. And size is an important consideration when you're picking spinnerbaits. Um, you know, we're gonna look at a real little one. Look at this small little compact frame, little Mullix FS spinnerbait, 3 16 of an ounce, all the way up to big giants. They call them ledge busters. Look at that. One ounce, three quarter, one ounce, ounce and a quarter. Uh, that's a Mullix Venator spinnerbait, right? And then everything in between. So, Size is an important consideration and for two main reasons. And here they go, forage match and depth of water. They're the main two considerations that we wanna think about when we're picking size of spinnerbait. And when we say size, we're not only talking about the weight of the lure of that spinnerbait, but we're also talking about the profile, right? Because look at those profiles. They're extremely different. Little tiny, small profile, giant, massive profile. So weight and profile, both considerations on size. Let's start with matching the forage. And you know if you've watched my shop videos, this is a big one for me. And we're gonna pick Spinnerbait size dependent on the forage size, right? So, you know, we're, we're trying to match the hatch with the spinnerbait. If you look down in the water and you see bait fish, a minnows, shad, little tiny bluegills, sculpin, small, we want that spinnerbait package to be small, right? We want to complement it with a small, profile spinnerbait. If you look down in the water and, and the profile, you see big forage, right? You see big giant gizzard shad. You see golden shiners that are four, five, six inches long. Big tilapia, adult bluegill, right? If your forage is big, we want a big profile Spinnerbait, right? We're matching the hatch. And of course, the regular run-of-the-mill spinnerbait, which is kind of your in-between spinnerbait, does a great job of fitting in the middle, right? So forage that's not ultra tiny, forage that's not giant, regular forage, right? Regular small bluegill, small shad, shiners, owlwife, uh, herring that are just, you know, three, four inches long. You want to match the profile, right? 
So size on matching the forage, and then size on the depth of, depth of water you're fishing. And the general rule of thumb is you want to pick a spinnerbait weight that's heavy enough to maintain bottom contact. Even if you're not fishing the spinnerbait on the bottom, you want to sort of meet that criteria, right? So in ultra shallow skinny water, let's call it zero to five feet, you don't need a spinnerbait that's very heavy. A quarters, three eighths, half ounce, zero to five foot is perfect, right? As you get deeper in the water column, we want to start increasing the weight of our spinnerbait. So now if we're in that, you know, 10 to 20 foot zone, 10 to 15, 18 foot zone, 10 to 20, half ounce, five eighths, right? You're starting to get heavier in your weight as you get deeper. And last but not least, ultra deep water. Now we're talking about 20, 30, 40 feet, and spinnerbaits work great in deep water. We want a heavier head. So now we're getting into our three quarters, our ounce, ounce and a quarter, even ounce and a half, giant heads to compensate for that deep water, right? So size to match forage, and size, talking about weight size, to mimic to match the depth of the water you're fishing, right? Okay, this is a great one on size. Um, before we get into color, let me talk about size of the blades as well. And they usually go hand in hand, right? So smaller spinner baits will have smaller blades, um, you know, little tiny number one, number two, number three blades. Medium-sized spinner baits will have that mid-sized blades, threes, fours, fives. And as you get to those big ones, you're going to start seeing these size six, size seven blades. And with your blades, you also want to mimic the forage, right? Because think about that blade. That blade is really what's mimicking the bait itself, right? The 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 shad or the minnow, the shiner, the, the gizzard shad, right? So you do want that blade to match the size of the spinner bait and also match the forage. All right, let's get into color now. And color selection in any bait is important, but with spinner baits, it's especially important, okay? So let's get into blade and bait color selection, spinnerbait skirt selection. Um, same two rules I'm going to give you with spinnerbaits that I give you on every other lure category. The two reasons I'm going to select color in all these spinnerbaits, it's real simple. Here it goes. You ready? Forage and water clarity. One and two. Forage and water clarity are your two considerations when picking spinnerbait color. There's one other thing we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna save that for the end of this color description, but forage and water color. Forage is easy, guys. I want you to pick a spinnerbait, skirt and blade, skirt and blade color to match what you're trying to imitate, right? Simple as that. Let me give you, a, I'll give you a couple here. Okay, let's give you a couple. Here's a nice, actually, let me show you this one because I think this is a, a really good one. Here's a white skirted pearl, white pearl skirted spinner bait with silver blades. A tandem combination, both silver blades with a white skirt. I want to pick that skirt and blade color when I'm trying to mimic little shad, little silvery bait fish, right? 
small silvery bait fish. They're whitish, they're silver. They have silver flash when they're moving. That's the color I want, white and silver. What about a bluegill? What about a sunfish or a panfish or a warmouth, right? A brim. I want to pick a skirt, head, and blade that mimic the bluegills and the sunfish and the panfish, right? So now I want a skirt that has some green pumpkin and blue. A lot of, a lot of bluegills have some yellow, little touch of orange. Now I want a gold blade. Most of those panfish species have a more of a goldish tone to them, right? So be very conscious of your forage when picking color. Um, yellow perch, fire tiger skirt, golden shiner, gold skirt with gold in it, a little bit of orange, right? Um, look at this thing, rock bass, crappie. There's a rock bass crappie skirt. So really think about the skirt color and the blade color matching your forage. All right, but now you also heard me say water clarity. And I, the real easy rule of thumb for this one is the clearer the water, the lighter and the more translucent you want the skirt, okay? The clearer the water, the lighter and more translucent you want that skirt. Because you don't want them to get a good look at it in clear water, right? It's a reaction. Also, the clearer the water, the more I lean toward silver blades, okay? A little more flash to that silver. But the opposite is true for dirty water, muddy water. I want a spinnerbait with some color. Chartreuse and white, uh, bluegill, fire tiger, right? I want a skirt that has more color to it to allow those fish to find it. Also, in dirty or stained water, I'm more apt to go to that gold, right? That gold is a way better color in dirty, off-colored, stained water. So dirty water, more color in the skirt, gold blade. Clear water, less color in the skirt, more translucent, and silver blades. All right, one last little thing I wanna to talk to you about with color, and these are definitely two sleeper spinnerbait colors that guys don't fish. Let's start with this one. The one is hot blades. We call them hot blades. So hot chartreuse, bright orange, bright white. Look at this, solid white blades, bright white. I've even seen pink blades, hot colored blades. They're great in dirty water because they're bright, but these hot blades can also be great in clear water. And this is that one of those weird anomalies that happen in fishing, and it happens in spinnerbait fishing, where bright blades on a spinnerbait, especially when you're reeling it really fast, can create sort of an aggression bite. And if you fish a lake that has schooling fish or smallmouth or spotted bass, which love to get together in wolf packs and groups, a lot of times these bright blades, when you reel them really fast, even in clear water, can produce some amazing bites, okay? So shock colors, right? Bright blades. And this one, a dark spinnerbait, a black or black and blue spinnerbait. Uh, this is a mullex color called pummel fish. And uh, actually, for this one, I'll pull it out, let you get a real good look at it. It's dark. It's a black head, a black and blue skirt with black blades. Everything is dark. And 
a dark black spinnerbait is so good, not just in dirty water, but in low light or nighttime conditions. When I'm night fishing, when I'm fishing in a major dark storm where the clouds roll in, if I'm fishing chocolate milk colored water, uh, super tannic colored water in Florida, that's a sleeper color. Have all that contrast of the black and that's all, right? So the profile, the flash and vibration, but dark. When it's dark out or it's super dirty water, that's a sleeper. All right, so we talked about size. We talked about color. Now let me talk about add-ons. And there's two that I wanna mention for spinnerbait fishing. And the one is adding a trailer. When and why do you wanna add a trailer on a spinnerbait, right? When and why do you wanna add a trailer on some of these spinner baits. So I'm going to add a physical trailer to this bait when I want to make the bait a little bulkier, when I want to slow it down and give it more action, right? That's a perfect time to add a trailer. And you could add anything you want on the back of a spinnerbait. But I'm a big advocate of single tail grubs. I love a single tail grub on the back of a spinnerbait when I wanna add some profile, when I wanna slow it down and give it a little more bulk. I love these single tail grubs. A Berkeley Power Grub, three inch, four inch, five inch, perfect, okay? so. My deal is I just like to match the color of the spinnerbait with the color of that single tail grub. So we've got a clear skirted silver bladed spinnerbait. I'm trying to imitate shad. I'm going to use a smaller three inch power grub. Thread it on the back. Now I've got a little extra action, a little extra bulk, and I can really slow this thing down when I'm using a trailer. Uh, Give you an example on a bigger one. Got a big, this is the five inch power grub. And we've got a half ounce white spinnerbait. White, white, I'm matching it up. Thread that thing on there. I always like to put the curl tail facing the opposite way of the bend of the hook. Cause I feel like that gives it the, its maximum action, okay? But when I want more bulk, when I want a little more action and when I want to slow it down, I really like those tails. Probably my best two scenarios for physical trailers on the back. You ready for this, guys? Cold water and dirty water are the two conditions that I add this the most. And when you get those two conditions together, cold, dirty water, it's a must, okay? Cold, dirty water, add a physical trailer. Usually a single tail grub or a ringworm, okay? All right, first add-on was, was easy, a trailer. Sometimes you want it. The next add-on is a really big, important deal almost all the time. I'm gonna give you my percentage of this next add-on as, let's give it to you as 70% of the time. 70% of the time when I'm fishing a spinnerbait, I'm gonna add that right there. I'm gonna add a trailer hook, okay? I'm gonna add a trailer hook on the back. And the reason's simple, it's because I'm gonna get some extra hookups. If the traditional spinnerbait, safety pin style spinnerbait, has any negatives, there are very few, but if it has any negatives, it's that, look at that wire. That wire that the blades attach to and keep it so snagless and weedless, 
sort of block that hook a little bit. So about 70% of the time, I'm going to add a trailer hook on the back of that spinner bait. Sparse cover, normal cover, open water, almost all the time. The heavier cover you get, if you start snagging with the trailer hook, it's time to take it off. So that would fall in at 30% when I'm not going to use it in real heavy cover. But if it's manageable, sparse, you know, normal cover to open water, add a trailer hook. The trailer hooks are great. This is a VMC trailer hook because they're designed with really big eyes. And that eye literally just slips over the spinnerbait, okay? And it free swings. And then all we're gonna do is get um, a little stop. Just a little black stop. You could use a little piece of surgical tubing. These black stops are great. And we're just gonna add that black stop on the hook to keep that hook from rotating around, okay? And it's just free swinging on there. The one thing I wanna mention about trailer hooks before I get on to the 30% when we don't need it, we said heavy cover ready. Do not overpower the spinner bait with the trailer hook. Use a smaller trailer hook on the back. So for most regular size spinner baits, let's call it quarter to half ounce, I use a one-aught or a two-aught trailer hook. That's it. There's a one-aught. There's a one-aught going on a three-eight spinner bait. Perfect. I just want that trailer hook just going to the level of the skirt. If your trailer hook is hanging below your skirt, it's too big. Now, of course, on big giant spinner baits, look at that one ounce spinner bait, we've got to go to a little bigger trailer hook. So three quarter, one ounce, ounce and a half, yes, go to a little bigger trailer hook. Three aught, four aught, about the biggest, right? But again, I don't want that hanging too far below my skirt. All right, one last thing on the positioning of that. Let's always put our trailer hook in the same direction as the spinnerbait hook. So facing up. That's going to allow that thing to come through the cover. If it's facing down, it's going to snag a lot. So let's always face it up. The 30% of the time I don't want a trailer hook is really heavy cover. When you're making a cast and you keep getting stuck, stuck and you have a trailer hook on, get rid of it. The other time we don't need a trailer hook is if we're using a short arm spinner bait. This is a really unique spinner bait by Mullix called a lover's short arm, also called a shorty. And it's got one big single blade on it. A lot of flash, a ton of vibration, Great as a slow rolling or drop bait. But because the blade, look at the wire so short. Now the blade's not getting in the way. The wire is not getting in the way of the hook. We absolutely do not need a trailer hook on a short arm spinner bait, okay? So that falls into the 30%. But 70% of the time, use a small trailer hook. You're gonna catch a few more on a traditional spinner bait. All right, that was a lot in our second segment, talking about size, color, and add-ons. Here's the great thing, guys. We got two more segments coming. And the next one in this Ultimate Spinnerbait series, we're gonna be talking about retrieves. And there's three retrieves that make all the difference when you're spinnerbait fishing. In the final segment on this series, we're gonna be talking about rod, reel, line, and that stuff is important too. I hope you're enjoying this series. I'm having a lot of fun talking about it. We're talking spinner baits, A to Z, everything in between. Um, it is one of the best bass lures ever created. 
If you like what you're watching in this Ultimate Spinnerbait series, stop right now, mash that button down there, hit the button, subscribe to my channel. We got great content coming to you every single week. If you're already a subscriber, tell your friends about Mike Iaconelli Fishing on YouTube. We're here to help you become better anglers. Um, I hope you like it. This is the Ultimate Spinnerbait series, number three, coming up next week. Bye.